Aww. What is wrong with you? I waxed my mustache and now I have a giant pimple. Who cares? They can't even see it. What do you mean you can't see it? That's all you can see. I don't shoot in 4K. Nobody can see that. It doesn't need... It's, they can't see the it's little... It's a 4K pimple. They can't see all the like mustache hairs. They can't see the gray hairs. How many mustache I mean, hairs you're wearing a hat. Stop fixating Ugh. on the little things and start focusing more on the keto lifestyle. Oh, uh, it's all you can see. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, Two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. <laughs> and we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Take your hand mm. off of that thing. Nobody cares, nobody can see it. It's so gross. I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm gross. Stop fixating on, like I said, I don't even shoot in 4K so nobody can see it. So don't worry about it. It's like a 10K pimple. <laughs> You're fixated on a little thing that's not that important. You know, every week we're in the middle of a live stream and I get hyper-focused on what I think is very important, like the color is not right nuts. or the comments aren't showing up and I start playing with it or somebody asks a question and I want to look for it and you're like, that's not important. We need to focus on the live stream, worry about that later. So shouldn't yeah. you be doing the same thing right now? Yeah, on Thursday, I feel like you are fixating on the wrong thing one hour of that day. <laughs> I take over the other 23 hours fixating on things like pimples and my hair and all of the other things that don't matter in the big scheme of things. But you know what? It's not fixating on it if it's your personal hang up, right? It's uh -huh. like, it's just being proactive. Or... You know what I'm fixating on right now? The fact that there's a cat that just jumped up here and I am not re-recording this. So yes, she... this is just getting put in there. She just wants to be a part of the show. Okay, well, here's the thing when it comes to fixating on things. A lot of times we fixate on the wrong thing. Yes, we do. And in today's video, we're gonna actually discuss five things that we need to stop fixating on in the keto lifestyle. Yeah. Now, before we do that though, we need to talk about today's sponsor because there is a sponsor for today's video. Which we love. And that is Equip Nutrition. This is my favorite flavor. So Equip makes some incredible nutrition products. If you haven't tried them, we love it. We especially love their protein powder because the protein powder is beef protein mm -hmm. and we like to mix it back and forth between this and keto chow, but really good clean ingredients low in total carbs, and it tastes really good. You said strawberry is your favorite flavor? Strawberry is my favorite. Really? See, I mean, I like vanilla, too. I always liked the chocolate, but of course it's been sold out recently. They did tell me they're getting some more in, but I have shifted from strawberry to the vanilla. I, I just love the flavor in the vanilla. It's got that slight coconut flavor from the coconut milk. It's really versatile. It makes really good pancakes. It makes a good shake. I like the night night juice. This stuff is really good. It does help us go to sleep. I've been getting some of the best sleep of my life since we started using this. I call it I'm night night juice. Really enjoying it. And I know you really like the liver pills as well, so that you don't have I'm, to eat beef liver. It's just a better alternative for me. So Equip is a huge supporter of our channel and down below there is a link to purchase some Equip products along with a coupon code. And we greatly appreciate for using that, especially because they do support us. We appreciate you guys supporting the sponsors who support Too Crazy Ketos. We with crazy. that being said, let's get into five things that we need to stop fixating on in the keto lifestyle. These are in no particular order, but we're gonna start off with number one, and that is something that we talk about on a regular basis, and that is the devil himself, <laughs> Mr. Scale. We, he should get the spotlight, right? <laughs> and I will say that all of these things that we're gonna talk about fixating on, we've struggled with too. So we are- Still struggle with. We preach into the choir at yep. this point. So yeah, the scale is something that I've definitely fixated on and still have trouble mm -hmm. like leaving every single morning because for me, 
The scale can be the determination on whether or not I have a good day or a bad day. It's only every morning for you? It's like five times a day for me. <laughs> Are you like getting on multiple times a oh, day? I get on in the morning. I get on when I get home from work. I get on before a meal. I get on after meal. It is probably my biggest fixation that I really need to get rid of. It ruins my day. Whether it gives me a good number or a bad number, the scale ruins my day. And here's how. Okay. If I get up in the morning and that scale shows an increase, I start freaking out about what did I do? Why am I one pound, two pounds, three pounds up? Or why am I not down one, two, three pounds from yesterday, the day before, or even last week? Yeah. If it shows a positive result, like, hey, you've lost two pounds in the last week. It affects me negatively because now I have a license to let up a little bit for the day, right? So like, oh, I lost two pounds. Today's a good day that I can have a bunch of ice cream or maybe I'll have two bars instead of one. Or you know what? I'm really cutting back on cheese because I'm finding my body doesn't agree with cheese, but I lost two pounds and I had a piece of cheese yesterday. So that means today I can have like a block of cheese. It's like, welcome back cheddar. Yes. Right? Right? Well, for me, it is, I like how you said that if I get on it today, I start to, and it, I don't like what it says. I start to think about what did I do yesterday? Yep. What did I do the day before? And all of a sudden, because I do the same thing, I am no longer present in today. Today is no longer a precious gift from God mm -hmm. as it was before I stepped on the scale. Yep. Now I'm stuck in the past. It yes. immediately propels me backward into a place that I can do nothing about. Right. I can't, even if I totally screwed up yesterday, I can't fix it. Yep. If I ate something wrong last week, I can't change it. That's right. And I notice that it actually affects me very negatively in my first interactions of the day. With me? Following that scale. <laughs> yes. Because whoever I see after I get on that scale and see something I don't want to see. That would be me. A lot of times it's you, but sometimes it's my kids. Uh, that's sometimes true. it's a coworker. Like if I get up and I've got to be at work, you know, six o'clock in the morning, it's not you I see first, you know, it's, it's a coworker who I want to have a good relationship with. I want to have a good interaction with my children when I have a good interaction with my mom, but I am thinking about that scale and I am in a negative headspace. And now I am not going to propel my relationships in a good direction yep. if I'm fresh off the scale. Yeah. The bottom line is the scale is just one number. And it is definitely something that I fixate on way too much, that Rachel fixates on way too much. But you have to look at the grand scheme of things. We've talked about this numerous times. If that number is not where you want it to be, but everything else is where you do want it to be, like you're not hungry anymore, and you're off of medication, and you have more mobility, and your size is going down, who cares what the number says, right? And we need to stop fixating on that one number and start fixating on everything else. Let's talk about number two. We need to stop fixating on other people's successes and failures. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really guilty of this one. Me too. I, I, I'm going to be on. I'm really guilty of this one on a daily basis. You think so? Oh, okay, well, let's be honest. Okay, let's lay all our cards out on the table. In case you didn't know, I am not happy with where I am currently in my weight loss journey. Not happy. Not happy at all. I was really happy a year ago, like pre-COVID, super happy with where I was. But COVID affected me. My sleep patterns got screwed up, my stress level went through the roof, and the next thing I knew, I'm up 20 pounds and I'm not happy about it. And I keep looking at everything that I do and I'm like, okay, my I'm eating calorically correct. I'm eating the proper amount of protein. I'm eating the proper amount of fat. I'm eating very low carb, generally under 10 total carbs a day. Pretty much, I mean, we do reviews of snacks, but that's about the only snacks we eat. We really don't do a tremendous amount of snacking, maybe once every two weeks. So I'm always looking at like, I'm doing all of this right. Why am I not having my results? And so what do I do? I go onto YouTube or to Facebook and I start comparing myself to other people. And what's worse is I compare myself to them and go, well, hey, I'm better than them. I'm Ooh. 
eating less carbs so? than them, or I'm eating less calories, or I'm eating the correct, I'm even guilty of comparing myself to my children who don't eat the keto lifestyle and go like, wait a second, why do they get to be skinny and eat sugar and wheat and everything else and I don't? And it's not a good place to be at in it's, your mind. It's not fair syndrome. Yes. Is a valid place to yes. live. Like I, I get it. I've experienced that also. My, I tend to fixate though on people who have stepped away from the keto lifestyle or have expressed that they've failed in the keto lifestyle because for me, I'm thinking, gosh, they're so much cooler than I am or they they have better circumstances mm -hmm. to maintain this lifestyle. I feel like they're smarter than me or they're more educated about this. So when I see them step away from the keto lifestyle, I think, how in the world am I going to maintain long-term success mm -hmm. if they couldn't stick with it. Right. And will I be able to stick with it? And instead of being like, okay, Rachel, calm down. You're sticking with it right now. Right. All I can think of is, yeah, but this isn't going to last. Like, I'm going to freak out for, you know, future Rachel. Well, here's the thing. I look at videos or I look at Facebook pictures or different things like that. And that's what I start using to compare myself. But we forget those videos, even our videos, right? Or those photos, they're a snapshot. <laughs> yes. They're one little glimpse, but we don't know what brought that about to get to that result, right? That's right. I mean, I think that I see online, especially in our Facebook group, a lot of people talk about the next topic, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is ketones. Yeah. And people compare things and they talk about like, well, why are my ketones lower than their ketones? But we don't know what did they do to get to those ketone levels. Like you're eating properly and your ketone levels may be like 0.7 or 0.8. Whereas you're gonna see somebody put up some like, well, my ketones are 5.2. Well, there's a good chance they may have fasted for like 12 days to get that number, but you don't know because you're only seeing and focusing on that 5.2 that the picture shows. So we need to not focus on other people's journeys and focus on ourselves because we have our own journey to worry about and everybody has a unique journey. Well, yeah, and there's definitely like, when you take a photo, I think about when I get dressed to go out someplace, even just coffee with a friend, and I will put on like four different outfits right. before we go out. So like if the friend says, you know, hey, oh, I like your outfit, that's super cute. It's like this old thing, I only put on four other outfits right. first. So like, I good, I went with the right outfit. But you know, you're framing what you want other people to see. Right. I mean, I always check and see like after I take a photo of, of me and like even the boys, I'll be like, hold on, wait a second, let me see if, if I look all right in this photo, <laughs> right? So that's not the authentic, real, if you were here, you know, maybe the photo was really like this. Right. But like, I don't want that. Right. I don't want to show that. No, you that's want to not... put your best foot forward. And that's what we're seeing when we look at people online. This ain't going on Facebook. Right. Like that. <laughs> no. Let's move on to number three. And as I said, the topic for number three is ketones. And I think this is a big one that we're all guilty of. And some of it is because we get pushed this whole idea of, you get a ketone meter or a breathalyzer and your ketone readings need to be in a certain place. And for example, you hear a lot of people talk about like, hey, you're not in ketosis if your ketone meter shows below 0.5, which is nonsense. And I know why we do it. Why do we do it? Because as you say all the time, I need my blue dot. Yes. Right? I need my blue dot. I need something going, you're doing good. Well, I need that. And then also when you compare your ketone readings to others, like if I see I have a 0.5 and you have a 1.2, suddenly we are in a race. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't realize that we're running a race, but we are. <laughs> we're in a race now. And the longer you're doing keto, it's almost like you feel like you should be better right. at doing it. And what are you going to do to show that you're getting you know, you're more seasoned right. as, a, as a person that's living this keto lifestyle. Like I eat the most amount of steak than right. anybody else I know. Like I don't even need a condiment anymore. <laughs> like you're trying to, to, to be better. You're just, you're creating a race 
that doesn't need to be there, but that's what you use those numbers for, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Well, here's the thing when it comes to ketones and why we need to stop fixating on ketone numbers. Everybody's different, as we say all the time. And everybody's body actually does different things with ketones. And the longer you're in ketosis, the longer you're doing the keto lifestyle, the more your body adapts to the point where it doesn't even need to have the extra ketones. Your body gets really efficient at going from like eating fat to that becoming fuel and not having the byproduct, which is ketones. But here's the thing. When you do a blood test for ketones, and let's not even talk about pee tests. Don't even bother with the pee sticks unless you're in your first or second week of right. doing keto. After that, throw those sticks out. That's why you shouldn't buy a bunch of them because they don't work after two weeks. So we're talking about blood. But here's the thing. When you do that, you're actually measuring extra ketones that are floating around in your blood. And that is impacted by a lot of things. It's impacted by eating. It's impacted by the dawn phenomenon. It's impacted by working out. So for example, let's say you get up midday, you check your ketones, you're at a 1.0, and then you go on a five mile run. <laughs> Wait, let's, let's face it, I'm never going on a five mile run. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay. Let's say some miracle happens and I go on a five mile run. He's being chased by a lion. And now my ketones are a 0.4. Does that mean going on a five mile run kicked me out of ketosis? No. Does that mean I should never go on a five you mile stop run? stop exercising. That one I might agree with. But now seriously, you need to exercise. It's good for you. But is it going to lower your ketones? Yeah. Why? Because your body's going to use those ketones as fuel to help you during your run. You're also probably going to have an increased glucose from doing that. It doesn't mean, again, you shouldn't exercise. That number doesn't mean much. It's extra ketones. If you want a high number, go take a bunch of exogenous ketones or go take some MCT oil. The number will go through the roof, but that doesn't mean you're going to lose any more weight. Ketone readings has nothing to do with the amount of fat that you're actually losing. It doesn't mean you're going to have a faster weight loss because you have higher ketone readings. So let's stop focusing on ketone readings. And while we're not focusing on ketone readings, let's also stop fixating on number four, which is being perfect. Do we have to? <laughs> I have a hard time with this one. This is honest. actually one that I don't really struggle with, at least when it comes to the keto lifestyle. I'm kind of a perfectionist in, in life. I want to be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. I, I try to people please. And I think that people are pleased when I do everything right. I want to have my macros where I could present them to people and be like, aren't you proud? I have made you proud by doing everything perfectly. Today, I think it was just ironic that my hair would not cooperate today. Is that why you're wearing a hat? No matter what I did, I could not get it. It was like curls this way, curls this way. It was just a hot mess. And I was like, finally, I just had to put a hat on it because it was either put a hat on it or not taped today. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, yeah, I can't focus on the fact that I cannot get my head of hair perfect today. Sometimes you just got to put a hat on it and keep going. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say something. In my eyes, yes, you are perfect. How cute are you? But wrong. <laughs> totally wrong. Well, let's talk about number five. But before we do, I do want to ask you to do us a favor. Please head down to the bottom of this video and hit that like button. And when you hit that like button, it does two things. Number one, it lets other people know that you like the video and then YouTube starts recommending it to people. Like us, please like us. But it also lets us know what type of videos you like to see. So when we have a video with like really high likes, we're like, oh, that's a topic that people like. We do need to find more things like that. Yeah. Also, while you're down there, please do us a favor, head over and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already. And if you aren't already, I don't understand why it's you're not. because we haven't gotten everything perfect, Joe. That's true. So while well, they're waiting for that, don't bother. Because <laughs> yeah. we're never going to get everything perfect. Sorry. Hence our live streams. Exactly. So hit the subscribe button. And while you're there, even more important that, than that subscribe button, hit that little bell button that's right next to it. Do they want to be notified? That is going to let you know every time we upload a new video or come up with a crazy idea for a video like this one. Yeah. Okay, so number five. And this is a big one that I think a lot of people, including myself, struggle with, especially when people first get started in the keto lifestyle. And that is stop fixating 
on what you can't have. I love the mountains. I love them. So I love I. seasons. I love elevation. We have none of that in Florida. What does that have to do with the keto lifestyle? Well, it's just about being content because it all falls into the content category, right? Yeah. I live in Florida and there are things that are beautiful and amazing about Florida. So much so that a lot of people come here to visit. Right. Because Florida's kind of awesome. Right. But I could tell you everything that is wrong and lacking with Florida. Lizards. And iguanas. <laughs> alligators, the heat, mosquitoes, the the moisture, the humidity. There's a lot of stuff. If I choose to focus on what I can't have, I can't have elevation here. I can't have mountains. There's no seasons. There's only summer and diet summer here. I will be miserable every single day because all I will be doing is yearning for someplace else. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that in our eating also. Right. Well, when it comes to the keto lifestyle, I think a lot of us focus on, I can't have bread. Yeah. I can't have pasta. True. I can't have sugar. I can't have candy. And when I first got started on keto four years ago, there really weren't a lot of alternatives. There was no such thing as keto bread. There was no such thing as like keto snack bars. You had the keto bars, which was a fairly new product. And you had Quest bars, which wasn't really keto. It was sort of keto, but not really keto. But there weren't like keto gummy bears and, and keto cookies, unless you made them yourself. Yeah. And now that stuff is available. But here's the thing, when we start focusing on all of the foods we can't have, we forget to appreciate what we can have. And as much as we're sitting going, oh, woe is me, I can't have rice with my sushi. There's somebody else out there who isn't in keto going, bacon. I just wish I could eat bacon. Ribs. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I think back to one of Steak. my favorite TV shows, like with Tim Allen, and oh, all he so ever does is talk about bacon, right? right? Loves bacon. But the bottom line is if you're not on keto, you really can't eat more than one or two pieces of bacon a day. And usually it's even a week. Well, I got some news for you. What? You know what else you can't have? What? Inflammation. No arthritis for you, sir. That's right. Mom, no more type 2 diabetes. You can't have it. Yeah. I can't have plantar fasciitis. I'm not allowed to have depression anymore. No more anxiety. I mean, there's a lot of things that we don't have and can't have anymore. And I kind of love that. So you take the, the good, you take the bad, you take them both. And there you have the facts alive, the facts alive. <laughs> With that being said, yes. let's talk about today's bonus. Cause there's always a bonus when we do a five things video. Yes, there is. And this is a big one. And this is something Maybe you want to focus on it, maybe you don't, but there's a reason we have it here, and that is stop fixating on the future. I think that it's super important mm -hmm. to not fixate on the future. And I'm not against goals, obviously. Right. I'm, I'm super goal-oriented. The problem with living in the future, thinking to yourself, these are all of the things that I'm going to do when I have dropped 25 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. This is when I'm going to live my life. I think about that the way somebody tells me I'm going to be generous as soon as I hit the lottery. No, you are not. You are not going to be generous when you hit the lottery if you cannot be generous with what you have right now. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. You are not going to live your best life and enjoy everything in the future. It's not like work is going to get better and relationships are going to be a dream and, and there's going to be no cares as soon as you lose this amount of weight in the future. You got to enjoy where you are right now. That's right. You've got to start liking you right now, cheering for you right now, not 50 pounds from now. Yeah. You know, somebody recently asked me, they sent me an email, said, do you think now is a good time to buy an RV? And the reason I ask is because we have a camping channel. And if you haven't seen that channel, I will leave a link for it up here. But if you don't know, if you're under a rock right now, the RV industry right now, kind of hard to find an RV. The manufacturers are saying they're two years behind schedule. And if you order one today, it's going to be at least a year before you get it. Yeah. You can't find used ones anywhere. And when you can, the price is through the roof. So the person emailed me, do you think now is a good time to buy an RV? And I said, absolutely. And their answer to me back was, but prices right now are like double than they were a year ago. And I'm like, you're right. 
Chances are they aren't gonna come down either. But aside from that, here's the thing. If you wait until the price of RVs comes down or until there's availability and you can have a bigger selection, how much are you going to be missing out on while you're waiting? What if it takes two years for you to find the perfect RV? That's two years that you couldn't go camping or couldn't hang out with your family. And it's the same thing with the keto lifestyle. If we focus on everything that we're gonna do when we lose our weight, we're gonna miss out on all the things that we're experiencing right now. And the bottom line is this, and I wanna leave you with this. Don't focus on tomorrow and then give up what's happening today. Yeah. Let's focus on today and worry about tomorrow tomorrow because worrying about tomorrow is only going to affect today in a negative way. It's true. And so if you have the opportunity to make a friend, go outside, visit someplace, get back in touch with a family member, do something like get out and come to one of the the meetups this mm -hmm. that's that are happening this year if there's something going on in your area don't wait and say well next year i'll be in a better place i'll have lost some more weight i won't be you know embarrassed going out go out now right. go live your life right now all right the bottom line is tomorrow isn't promised to any of us focus on today and enjoy wherever you're at in your journey right now now, with that being said, that is going to end today's video. Let us know down in the comment section if there's anything else that you fixate on that we didn't touch on. Also, let us know down in the comment section which one of these or which ones of these are you really guilty of fixating on and what are you going to do to stop fixating on it. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, check out some of the other videos that we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. Whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time, bye. bye.